Okay, well, welcome to today's class and thank you everybody for coming. Today's class is going to cover the nervous system and special senses. If you look in front of you, you can see you've got several little mini specimens today. We'll be looking at them. You've got a brain sitting in front of you also. I've got a two minute little video segment on kind of an introduction to the nervous system. Now this is a comparative class. The nervous system is the control center of the human body. It is highly sophisticated, enabling the body to perceive, interpret, and respond to changes in its environment, while also facilitating cognitive processes such as learning, memory, and language. The nervous system controls voluntary processes, including the action of skeletal muscles, and involuntary processes, including circulation, respiration, and digestion. The nervous system can be divided both structurally and functionally. Structurally, the nervous system can be divided into the central and peripheral nervous systems. Right, here's a starfish right here. I'm just going to get kind of big. Instead of having you guys taking the time to have you guys all um, get your own, why don't you come over here and let's just look at this guy really quick. Everybody kind of move towards it. Starfish are very sluggish animals. And we've talked about starfish before. Actually, if starfish were fast animals, you probably wouldn't want to go in the ocean because they are highly predatory animals. Um, and they um, are very uh, voracious eaters. At the end of each of their arms, they actually have, if you look the picture up there, they actually have eye spots. And eye spots don't work like your eyes do, but eye spots do allow them to detect light versus dark. Um, and they do have a tendency to move uh, move towards light or dark, depending on what it is, whether they're hiding or whether they're hunting or stalking. Because these guys do actually stalk. And John, you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. So when I see a human spine, and then when I when you're showing a, a radial um, nerve on the starfish, is that are there neurons inside of both of those things, and are they one long neuron, or are there lots of neurons together, or are they like a bundle of neurons? Yeah. It is multiple neurons. Um, they do have nerve cells, and I don't know how familiar any of you are with the nervous system, but there are two types of cells in all nervous systems. One of them are called neurons, um, and one of them are called glial cells. You guys all have a squid in front of you. Take your squid, make it a little bit bigger if you want, and look closely at its eye. And squid and octopus both have the ability to change colors. They have chromatophores on their skin that allow them to hide themselves when they're stalking their prey. The largest neuron that we see in any animal in the world is believed to be found in squid, a giant squid. They can be up to multiple feet long. Um, the next one we have in front of us is a shark. So go ahead and take your shark. Now, also, if you look, and this is where um, we were talking about brain size, um, if you guys know anything about sharks, um, you know that their best sense is their sense of smell. And if we look up here, whereas we said that the squid brain is devoted to vision, if you look at the shark brain, you can see that the largest part of a shark's brain is the olfactory lobe, and that is the sense of smell. Sharks have a nostril that is not used for breathing at all. They use their gills. Um, their nostrils have an in and an out. Um, water goes in through one side and out through the other side, and it's a cup-shaped nostril that doesn't lead towards the gills. If you look at the uh, picture in front of you on the whiteboard and you look at the brain itself, this part is called the cerebrum. The cerebrum, there's actually a left and a right hemisphere. It is broken up into multiple lobes, the frontal lobe, which you can see up here, the parietal, the temporal, and the occipital. Um, each of those lobes control different things. For example, the occipital lobe is going to be the area where we process vision. We also have the uh, cerebellum, which is sometimes referred to as the arbor vitae because it kind of looks like a tree. If you take your brain, guys, and blow it up really big, you can actually move inside of the brain. And I want everybody to go in their brain because you can see that when you move in the brain, there are actually some open parts of the brain known as ventricles. The brain does look like a solid organ, but when you get inside of it, there is definitely some uh, spaces, some open spaces there. Their vision is not as great as ours, and we're going to take a field trip here in about two minutes, and we're going to go in and see how um, cats see the world differently than we do. If you look around, you can see human vision, okay? You can see this office, how we see it. But now, if you look, this is how a cat sees. 